new videos every day. The last video we talked about the limitations of biological mind control because neuroscience doesn't understand how information is encoded in the brain and the central nervous system. And someone was cool enough to send me a, a link to an article written in 2007 uh, of August by Discover Magazine and the article is called 10 Unsolved Mysteries of the Brain. And that's what we're going to talk about. What are the 10 top unsolved mysteries of the brain. This is really interesting stuff and it ties right into the last video that I did. So I'm going to go over all of the top 10 mysteries of the brain and I'm going to make comments about each one. But before I go over the top 10 mysteries of the brain, I want to make a comment about what all of the top 10 mysteries have in common. You see, in philosophy, in psychology, in fact, in just about any of the sciences, an important distinction is made between the function of something and the structure of something. By function, we are talking about the intentions behind something, its purpose, what it does, its activities, and the result of that activity. For example, if you have a fork, the function for the fork is to pick up food. By structure, we are referring to physical form, how the object is arranged, its shape, its physical parts, and how those parts fit together into a whole. So the structure of a fork is a metal shaft with three or four sharp prongs pointed out from the shaft. In psychology, the mind in terms of function means what the mind does. For example, some of these functions would include memory, perception, reasoning, and emotional response. These different functions of the mind in psychology are called mental faculties. In psychology, when we talk about structure, we are talking about the brain, the physical structure of the brain, the parts of the brain, the neurons, the neurotransmitters, etc. The words mind and brain tend to be used interchangeably in common speech. However, in psychology and in the philosophy of mind, brain is used to refer exclusively to the structure of the brain. And mind is used to refer exclusively to the mental functions of the mind. So the basic assumption that biological psychology is based on, meaning the actual foundation that the entire subject is built on top of, is that the physical structure of the brain is responsible for the non-physical function of the mind. Mystery number 10. What is consciousness? Well, there's been a great deal of research done in an attempt to unlock the mystery of just what consciousness is. But not only is the phenomena of consciousness not understood on a structural level, but there isn't a good agreed upon functional model for just what this phenomena is either. One thing that's interesting about consciousness is that on a functional level it appears to exist outside of the mind as if it's looking in. For example, if you compare the mind to a computer, both the mind and the computer store information, both the mind and the computer input information, both the mind and the computer process information and both the mind and the computer output information. But no one assumes that the computer is aware of what it's doing. Now, consciousness is like the computer user. It knows what the computer's doing and it's guiding its operations. Mystery number nine. How do the specialized systems of the brain integrate with one another? This relates to consciousness. In other words, Perceptual information flows into different parts of the brain. Sight goes to one part of the brain, sound goes to another part of the brain, taste goes to another part of the brain, and tactile sensation goes to another part. But when you perceive the world, you view all of these as an integrated whole even though these different areas of the brain are not connected together. How does this work? No one knows. It's a mystery. Mystery number eight. 
Why do brains sleep and dream? My comment, no one knows. But what we do know is that if you deny someone of their sleep in dreaming, then they begin to exhibit signs of mental illnesses. In fact, there was a study done and psychiatrists couldn't tell whether someone was diagnosed as mentally ill or if they just had a lack of sleep. Mystery number seven, how is time represented in the brain? Again, no one knows, but what we do know is that it's not at all at a uniform rate. After all, sometimes time seems to pass very quickly, and other times time seems to drag on forever. We do know that it probably is related to completed sequences of motion. For example, when you are very busy, time passes by very quickly. Mystery number six. What is intelligence? Psychologists have yet to come up with a clear definition of intelligence that everyone can agree on. Because of this, there's no objective standard to what intelligence is. So IQ is just an arbitrary number given to a person and compared with other people who have taken the test. But there is no actual standard that exists outside of people taking this test. What we can tell is that intelligence is a combination of many, many different factors. Imagination, perception, education, literacy, reasoning ability. It's not just one thing. And all of us have different levels of abilities at each one of these factors. But we sort of lump all of these factors together and we call it intelligence. Mystery number five. What are emotions? Well, I already did a video about this, and if you're interested, go ahead and check out Music, Emotions, and Mind Control. Mystery number four. How does the mind simulate future? In other words, how do people imagine future events and predict consequence? My only comment on this is that if you compared the mind to a supercomputer, this one ability would make the supercomputer look like a pocket calculator. Mystery number three. What does the baseline activity in the brain represent? This one's a complex one and I don't have time to go over it in this video, but essentially, I don't think scientists can establish a baseline because I don't believe that a baseline for brain activity even exists. Mystery number two. How are memories stored and retrieved? Now, this point is fascinating, and I'll have to do a whole video on the subject. I will say that the scientist who is known as the father of neurology and the scientist who won a Nobel Prize for discovering how neurotransmitters work, both came up with the conclusion that memories are not stored in the brain. How could that be? Well, you'll have to stay tuned. And what is the biggest mystery of the brain? Mystery number one. How is information encoded in the brain? Now, this is the holy grail of biological psychology or psychiatry, and because it's not understood, it dramatically limits what psychiatry is able to do. And I did a whole video on this earlier. If you're interested, you can check it out. It's called Biological Mind Control. In a future video, we'll be talking about brainwashing. What exactly is brainwashing? Thanks for watching. Please rate my video, and I'll see you next time. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.